Happy Friday, everyone. Josh of Severe Weather. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about tropics and why the Atlantic is so quiet, but when it looks like it may wake up and a lot to talk about in the Pacific. And I do want to spend some time on that as well with Hawaii potentially in the path of at least one storm here over the next week, uh, which is a little bit rare for them. But here is where we are looking at some potential development. Now, nothing happening very quickly. Uh, and you may think, well, this season's probably going to be a bust. And I don't think we could necessarily say that right now. We've got a lot of time still to go with this hurricane season. Uh, those of you in Florida remember Hurricane Ian in 2022. That season was moving along very slowly, and then all of a sudden, Ian. This one's already off to a very hot start, although it has cooled a bit. So we're looking at a couple of different areas. Uh, one will be a wave that comes off of Africa that may take its time developing for a while, but has a potential to be coming something around Labor Day weekend towards the islands, and then something we need to keep an eye on beyond that. Again, this is a ways off, and a lot is probably going to change between now and today, but it's something that continues to show up as a potential signal, so I do want to talk about it. Uh, way too soon to make any kind of crazy calls. I think that's a little bit um, far-fetched at this point. Another area we have to keep an eye on, we've got a boundary over the Gulf that's just going to stew around for a while. Some tropical waves will move across Florida where it's been very wet, and as it moves into the Gulf, we may eventually see something try to spin up here, but probably not until after Labor Day. Uh, so here's a look right now at the uh, Earth. Uh, this is Zoom Earth, and you can see we've got three named storms in the Pacific, uh, one which may threaten Hawaii, another behind it, even a third disturbance, and then something that we're definitely going to be more concerned about in central Japan, a typhoon, Shan Shan. Shan. I apologize for uh, getting that name wrong. And I will talk about uh, how that's going to impact the island of Japan here in a little bit. Let's look at the Atlantic first, because I know that's what a lot of you guys are here to keep an eye on. And uh, a boundary that's just kind of hanging out here across the southeast, draped into the Gulf. Uh, we have had some thunderstorm complexes move across the plains and some wet weather across Texas. And then you can see there's actually a tropical wave that doesn't look like it's going to do much, but it is dumping a lot of rain across uh, portions of Jamaica and Cuba and certainly the Bahamas. And this is going to continue to track westward and add some wet weather to the Florida Peninsula here over the weekend. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, especially in central Florida. And you have to go back to Debbie a couple of weeks ago. Sarasota, Bradenton got a lot of rain. And unfortunately, this is going to add to the misery here. Another wet weekend coming. So this wave is, is worth bearing watching when it gets into the Gulf. But right now, the upper level environment is way too hostile for anything to form. It's going to have to fight for its life and at least take, I'd say, more than likely another eight to nine days before there's even something to really try to track. Uh, the good news for you in Bermuda is you are sitting under a region of high pressure. The air is very stable. The main development region over here is very quiet and should stay that way for the next week. And then uh, you can see uh, over the Mexican coastline, we are getting some rain, but really two systems to watch at this point here, Hurricane Gilma and then what could be the next hurricane behind it uh, coming over the following days. And for the rest of the U.S., enjoy this beautiful weather across the eastern U.S. Uh, this area of high pressure aloft is going to rebuild and bring an end to our false fall here by the beginning of next week. It'll get hot again, and the humidity should gradually climb. We do have a bit of an upper-level disturbance across the northeastern Gulf. You can see our boundary here across northern Florida back to Louisiana. Still hot south and west of that front. Uh, the Gulf waters here are just boiling over, and that's never a good sign. But until something forms, it's just potential. Uh, and you can see here a little bit of a spin across the Northeast Gulf, sending southwesterly flow into Florida, and that's going to bring us some wet weather from the Big Bend down into central Florida here. That doesn't even include the wave that's east of the picture right now. Taking a look at that uh, wave, you can see here there's just nothing really uh, spinning up at this point, just a lot of moisture and definitely coming down hard, especially east of Nassau here across the central Bahamas and over parts of eastern Cuba and Jamaica needs the rain. You are getting some of that as well. Uh, parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti will see some rain, but the biggest rainfall area is across the Bahamas for the time being. And if you take a look here at the visible image here, uh, let me get this off the screen. Uh, you can't see what I can see, but that's okay. Um, you can see here that there just really isn't much to really write home about. It's just very disorganized. The cloud canopy is spreading north and west, uh, but there's a lot of wind shear here across the northern Gulf of Mexico. So uh, nonetheless, lots of rain coming for parts of Florida. Um, you don't need a name storm to cause flooding. 
Uh, in fact, we learned that in May in Florida. We learned that every May in Florida, I think. Uh, but here we are in later August and no name storm for this time. But something that we do need to keep an eye on. The main development region right now is looking pretty good. Uh, no development expected, very stable air in place. Uh, main development regions getting a late start after barrel. Um, just nothing really set to go. But those waves still need to be tracked as they move farther west across the Caribbean into the Gulf. Depending on if they gain latitude, we definitely need to still keep an eye on it. And finally, uh, the eastern Atlantic's looking pretty good as well, but a massive wave here set to come off. If it goes far enough south, south of 15, then I do think it needs to be tracked. If it somehow comes farther north into this area, the waters are cooler, and the wind shear right now is still very high out of the east. Here's a look at our ocean water temperatures, and we can see uh, the Atlantic remains very warm. And uh, except for this one little area here in the wake of Hurricane Ernesto last week, that's running several degrees below average, that should eventually um, go away and we should start to see temperatures recover aloft uh, due to the high pressure ridge and translating down to the ocean as well. Uh, the only other cool spots right now are basically around the equator and of course on the Pacific side where we do have not a La Nina yet. We're flirting with a La Nina, but we're not there yet. Uh, but the other thing to worry about here is what's going on across the northern Gulf of Mexico. It's been a very hot August, and if we take a closer look at that, we can see 2.7 degrees is the anomaly here over the northern Gulf Coast. That's Celsius, so we're talking more than 4 degrees Fahrenheit above average in what's climatologically the hottest part of the season. There's no place in the Gulf that's not running warm. So uh, if something does get forming here, the storm fuel is going to be above average, and that's obviously going to be of concern. Uh, you can see we have a lot of Saharan dust. It's been a very busy summer of Saharan dust, which is not a bad thing. Uh, we don't want to see storms getting forming near the Cape Verdes and then tracking across. Those are usually really bad ones. The dust is keeping things at bay, and it will continue to do that. And then as far as wind shear goes, you can see down here the wind shear is well above average out of the east. We have strong easterly trades as much as 30 knots above the average uh, just south here of the, towards the equator. And these strong easterlies are really just kind of shearing apart our systems as they come across. We've got the cooler, drier air up in here, and then we've got the fast easterly flow. So for the time being, that is a good thing. Um, in the Gulf and in the southwest Atlantic, we have strong westerlies. So we really only have the possibility of seeing something forming in the Western Caribbean or, or Caribbean or in the Southwestern uh, Gulf of Mexico. And right now uh, with the area of high pressure that's been holding strong, we just don't really have uh, the opening for something like that to happen. Now, as we head into next week, heading up to about Labor Day weekend and just past, uh, the Northern Gulf is still dealing with a lot of wind shear, but take a look at uh, some reduction of wind shear down here in the lower latitudes. As we move past the sixth, we can see that the easterlies are beginning to weaken. And if this forecast is correct, and it may not be, uh, we've all been fooled a lot here, um, then definitely conditions getting into the second, third week of September favor storms that have a better chance of surviving and developing. And that continues here. Survive in advance is, is the name of the game here by the end of September. Uh, as we take a look here at what our ensembles are showing, nothing here through the weekend. That's great news. Really nothing early next week either. Uh, but as we head towards next weekend and beyond, this is Labor Day, and then right after Labor Day, we start to see some things popping up here near the islands around the 4th and 5th of September, maybe even a little bit sooner. Uh, nothing in the Gulf, according to the GFS Ensemble. But we can see several solutions beginning to pick up on this area here. Uh, and it's actually going to be pretty close to where Ernesto formed, if this is correct. More solutions going up into the southwest Atlantic. That does keep the Bahamas and southeast coast at least in play. Uh, we can also see towards the very end um, that the Gulf needs to be watched here. But again, uh, this is still a couple weeks away. So we continue to push back our next potential start time here uh, across the Atlantic Basin. Now, the Europeans a little bit more aggressive with this feature coming in to the islands here. Uh, later next weekend into the following week. And we see uh, some potential threats of Bermuda, maybe something for the Bahamas to keep an eye on. Again, pretty quiet across the Gulf of Mexico, though. Uh, just too much wind shear. But, you know, it's certainly the time of year where with those waters being as warm as they are, we need to watch it. Now, a lot of different solutions here, as you would imagine, but some keep the East Coast in play here the weekend after next. Again, two weeks from today, so way too soon to make any calls. And then if you look at the AI forecast from the European, I don't really want to show too many deterministic models. I've shown you the GFS before, and you know how bad that can be. 
Uh, you can see it does start to form something here near the Virgin Islands, pretty close to Labor Day time frame, and uh, maybe even a, a developing system which could become Hurricane Francine uh, by the time we get later into the following week. So around and after Labor Day is the time frame to watch. Uh, it does have lowering pressures in the Gulf here as well. I just want to kind of point that out, uh, but nothing really developing yet, just disturbed air, uh, weather at this point. Uh, there will be more coming across Africa. You see there's a big area of high pressure here. There's a weakness here. Under the weakness, there will be the possibility of seeing something forming beyond that. But again, the next seven days looking great here for the tropics, other than this wet weather coming into Florida and the Western Caribbean and the Bahamas. And that will translate into the Gulf here. You see this increase in moisture towards the middle of next week over the Gulf. More rain heading into Texas and Mexico and probably Louisiana and Mississippi as well. Uh, middle of next week and beyond. It should stay pretty wet along the Gulf. Take a look at this surge of moisture that comes in um, after Labor Day to the Northwest Caribbean and to Florida and eventually the Southeast Coast. So um, whether or not we have to deal with a name system, we're going to see quite a bit of rain across this zone here. Now the Pacific is picking up and we have a new tropical storm. It's uh, called Hona and it is south and east of the big island of hawaii now remember last year we had a storm come by south of hawaii somewhere in here there was enough wind flow out of the east to aggravate dry conditions and create deadly wildfires across maui now this setup is not exactly the same hasn't been quite as dry in hawaii now but uh, obviously one that needs to be watched if you, as you look a little bit closer here under the hood you see kind of an exposed system that doesn't have a lot of central convection yet and it's moving very quickly from east to west so not a great candidate to become a stronger storm, but one that could become at least something that we need to watch. And there is a tropical storm watch for the big island of Hawaii. Wanted to show you guys WeatherTap's uh, tropical image here with uh, the nearest approach coming sometime Sunday early in the day um, and really late Saturday night Hawaiian time. I like this graphic. It brings you back to the 90s nostalgia. I think of Jordash jeans for whatever reason. If you move that today and they deliver that to you, then we would have Jordash DoorDash. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, uh, something to watch here in Hawaii. Um, we're looking at sometime early on Saturday into Saturday night. Uh, Tropical Storm Watch has been posted. The official forecast does strengthen this into a hurricane in the Central Pacific, but it keeps it south of Hawaii. Now, the northern end of this could certainly clip the island, and a lot of rain and wind could be coming. But the difference from a few days ago is that the solution guidance has shifted south. And that will keep the system on a more southerly route here and move it very quickly past the island. So we'll have heavy rain, but I don't think we're going to be dealing with a direct hit. Here's a look at Hona's uh, intensity forecast, tropical storm, uh, and likely strengthening up to about 48 to 60 hours. So later in the weekend, and then reaching its peak and weakening as it hits stronger wind shear. Uh, behind it, we have Hurricane Gilma, and we have another disturbance likely to form behind it. That's going to be the H storm. I haven't even looked to see what the name is yet. Uh, but you can see those on satellite here. Gilma's actually beginning to weaken. It's been a stronger Category 3. The next one behind it needs to wait for Gilma to go away before it can intensify, but certainly starting to have that look of uh, a lot of convection. Here's Gilma. The eye is beginning to become cloud-filled. It is moving west-northwest following uh, Hona, and the official track uh, is to the north and east of the island here and a weakening system, but... Uh, uh, Hawaiian Islands, I should say, but it is certainly still got Hawaii in its crosshairs. Uh, time frame for that is going to be sometime towards the second half of next week. And you can see quite a bit of weakening is expected in our intensity guidance. So as we look at that, we see it'll be a depression by the middle of next week. Uh, really tough to see on the map. This is actually the big island sticking out here. Uh, so on this path, it would take it just north of the Hawaiian Islands, but could bring yet another round of heavy rain to Hawaii here. Uh, so that is what we're looking at there. This is the next invest, and you can see a lot of wind shear right now kind of exposing that center in this area. Sorry about this. We're having some goes issues with tropical tidbits, but uh, you can see it's following Gilma and really waiting for Gilma to get out of the way before it can develop. But once it does, uh, we are seeing some higher intensity forecasts here in about four to five days. Uh, so we need to watch it as well for in Hawaii. Here's kind of a look at the GFS. Here's Hona moving by to the west, slowly weakening. Gilma, very strong, but weakening and becoming a very weak system north here towards the second half of next week. Here's a system behind it, which is likely to become a tropical storm, even possibly a hurricane, uh, but looking like it's going to stay north of the islands. But a one, two, three here coming 
one, two, three inning come in here for Hawaii over the next week or so. This is going to be your busiest week. Here's some tropical guidance just to kind of show you how close it gets here. Uh, this one model does show it um, very early Sunday morning coming within 100 miles of the big island. Here's Gilma, which is weakening, and then the system behind it strengthens as we get to next Tuesday and Wednesday. It could be a pretty strong storm as well if this model is correct. All right, in the Pacific, we have a big issue here for Japan. This is uh, Shan, Shan Shan. Yes, that's what we call it. And it is now a typhoon with winds of 75 miles per hour. The track has shifted a little bit to the right of Kyoto and Osaka, uh, but this would be one of Japan's strongest typhoons in memory here. If it shifts more to the right, we have to be very concerned in Tokyo. If it shifts back to the left, obviously for Kyoto and Osaka. Uh, it is starting to show some signs of stronger intensification. We have a pretty good core of thunderstorms going here. The wind shear is lessening and water temperatures are very warm. And guidance all shows strengthening throughout the life of the system here. If you take a look at one of our tropical models, you will see something that is going to be of concern here, a strengthening typhoon over the weekend and the pressure dropping significantly into the 920s and maybe even the 910s. So a super typhoon as it comes close to Japan, maybe weakening a little bit as we get into uh, Tuesday night, Japan time, uh, Tuesday morning, U.S. time, uh, but moving right over the center of Japan and then finally weakening as it does so. Here's a closer look at the HAFS. I could show you other tropical models. They're showing similar solutions. And you can see a powerful typhoon here. This would be a Category 4, possibly Category 5 super typhoon. Uh, pressures down to as low as 917 millibars, which would be the strongest storm we've seen across the entire world this year so far, stronger than barrel and bigger as well. And you can see the landfall is expected around 11 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. So in Japan, uh, would be just after midnight, early Wednesday morning, if that were correct. So I'll be tracking that for you guys. Uh, while the Atlantic stays quiet, we always have things to watch uh, in the U.S. Enjoy our lull right now. Uh, as we head towards the final week of August and the meteorological fall starts on uh, Monday, Labor Day. Thank you so much today uh, for your time. If you did enjoy this video, I ask you to become a subscriber, like the video, share with your friends, and join the community. Uh, you all are wonderful. I really do appreciate uh, having this ability and blessing to be able to help others as a Christian man. Um, I believe that it is truly a, a huge blessing to give. Um, and even you read that in the, uh, if you're a Christian, you read in the Bible, Acts 20, uh, 35, that I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And before I became a believer, I had some, I had, a, had an entitlement mentality that I needed to, I needed to be given things first before I would be blessed. I needed to receive, I needed to be on the receiving end of everything. That's how I was going to be blessed. What I realized when I began to uh, grow my relationship and, and realize why I was created and what I was here to do, what I was gifted, what my calling was, that going out and blessing more folks and more and more folks and giving my time and efforts to help others is truly what brings me joy. And I pray that that's what brings you joy as well, because nobody wants to go through life not having any joy. Uh, whether or not you get it from the Lord um, or from whatever you truly believe, and you're welcome to believe whatever you want, um, it is, in fact, a blessing to be able to give and give and give and to sow into other people and to help and to just be a blessing to others. And that's what I wanted to share with you today, that word of encouragement that it may seem like you're not blessing other people in your life. But if you go out there with that giver's mentality and not the entitlement mentality, then do expect to be blessed more and more. That's what Jesus did. And that's what um, I subscribe to. So hope you all have a wonderful Friday and I'll catch you all again soon. Have a blessed day. See ya.